So, today we will read a text called The Tyranny of Choice. Interesting title, don't you think? I'm sure you all know what choice is. Bhira. But what about the word tyranny? Do you know what it means? Tyranny means aritzut. What a strange combination, don't you think? Tyranny is definitely negative. What does this mean here? Let's look at some eye-catching features to see what the writer means. Let's look at the sentence under the title. Logic suggests that having options allows people to select precisely what makes them happiest. That's right, it sounds logical and positive. Let's continue. But notice the marker of contrast. You can expect to read the opposite of what has been said. As studies show, abundant choice often makes for misery. Hmm. Just as we expected, after the but comes the negative. In this case, umlalut, misery. That's not good. So, abundant choice, too much choice, doesn't make you happy. It makes you miserable. So, how does this connect to the title? The writer uses the word tyranny in the title. And right after that, he uses the word misery in the sentence under the title. So what does the writer want to tell us here? It seems that the writer has a negative opinion about abundant choice. We can also see that the writer is going to base his opinion on evidence. Notice the words studies show. So we are going to read about studies, research studies, on this topic. So far, we've seen something of the writer's attitude, but it's not just an opinion. In academic texts, writers usually support their opinions with evidence from research studies. So what is the difference between opinion and evidence? Opinion or attitude is what someone thinks. Evidence is based on research studies, surveys, or any other factual information. כלומר, דעה היא סובייקטיבית, משהו שהכותב או מישהו אחר בטקסט חושב, וראיות הן מבוססות על מחקרים, סקרים ועובדות. So let's continue our pre-reading of the text by looking at the source, Scientific American, April 2004. This means that the text appeared in a journal that published only scientific work. It has to be based on research or empirical studies. This explains the writer's use of the word studies in the sentence under the title. It's important in the text. What about the writer of the text? His name is mentioned on the first page, Barry Schwartz. Let's see if we have any information about him. It's important to know something about the writer so that we can expect what the writer will focus on, from what perspective Nikudat Mabat he or she will discuss this topic. If it's not on the first page, it will probably be on the last page. Here it is. We can see that Barry Schwartz is a professor of social theory and social action in the Department of Psychology. Hmm. So as a professor of psychology, he will focus on the psychological aspects of choice. This can explain his use of words like tyranny, happiness, misery. He will be referring to the psychological condition or situation we experience when we have a lot of choice. Another interesting piece of information about our writer is that he has recently published a book on the consequences of excessive choice. So now we can be sure that our writer is not just stating his view or opinion about choice. He has been studying this issue and has even written a book about it. He must be an authority on this topic. Before we leave this page, did you notice the illustration on this page, the picture? Notice the man in the picture is surrounded by too many things to choose from. He looks stressed and confused, don't you think? Do you feel like that sometimes as you walk in the supermarket? Or when you go shopping for clothes? 
Oh, when you need to buy a new mobile phone or a new car. I certainly do. It can be quite frustrating at times. Other eye-catching features we have in this text are section headings. Remember, they divide the text into sections. So, here the text is divided into seven sections. Each section will discuss one idea. So, from the eye-catching features we have seen so far, we can say that the writer will say negative things about too much choice. Can we confirm our prediction with the section headings? האם אנחנו יכולים לאשש את ההשערות שלנו, את התחזיות שלנו, עם כותרות המשנה? Will they say the same thing? Question. Read the section headings. Which word or words confirm our prediction about the writer's opinion of abundant choice? Mark them in the text. Press pause and come back when you're done. You're back. Let's take a look. The first section heading reads, Recipe for unhappiness. The second, Regret adds to costs. Notice the word regret. The next, Adaptation dulls joy. Notice the word dulls. מכה, בקוף, מעמעם. מלשון לעשות פחות ברור, פחות חד. Even if you don't understand it right now, never mind. We will continue to understand it in the context. Our next section heading is The Curse of High Expectations. And the next, A Link to Depression. The last section heading is What Can Be Done. This means there's a problem. Notice all these headings are quite negative. Let's see what we marked. Unhappiness, regret, dulls, curse, depression. Even if you didn't understand some of them, we see that many are negative. This confirms our prediction that the writer is going to focus on negative aspects of abundant choice. One more thing you might have noticed. Did you notice the box lessons, lekachim? It might have caught your eye as you were flipping through the pages. Let's zoom in on the box and go over the titles. Choose when to choose. This is important. Maybe sometimes we shouldn't choose. Learn to accept good enough. Hmm, sometimes we don't need the best. Good enough is good enough. מספיק טוב גם יכול להיות טוב. Don't worry about what you're missing. Good advice. Control expectations. Sometimes we expect a lot, don't we? Hmm, it looks like these are tips or suggestions or recommendations on how to make choices. Maybe the writer wants to give his readers tips on how to deal with the negative aspect of abundant choice. We are ending our lesson. So, what did we learn about our text? We know the topic of the text is choice. We also know what the main idea will be. Abundant choice, too much choice, is not as good as we think. This shows us the writer's attitude. He will probably be against abundant choice. How did we learn this? By pre-reading the text, going over eye-catching features. All this is based on our predictions, hash'arot. In the next lesson, we will try to see if we were right.